<laughs> and so I know you have been tracking the CCP's infiltration and influence in the United States of America for a number of years. And now with the balloon being so public and visible, so what hasn't the American government done that have caused the CCP to increase its infiltration and uh, influence in this country? I think the CCP believes it has a strategic opening right now. The Chinese Communist Party, I mean, I know many of you know it, it's a gangster regime. And, you know, I, I think sometimes we say it's a gangster regime and we just, we take it almost as like a slogan. But it really functions like a mafia. It functions like an organized criminal organization. And if you understand what that means, it means you need to, you need to spread networks of corruption. And that is how its influence spreads. In order for the CCP to go into a country, it needs to create the fertile soil of corruption in that country. And I think the CCP believes it has enough corruption, enough, uh, let's say, people on its side through leadership capture. Think of the big businesses, the Nikes, the NBAs, the corrupt politicians, the you know Hollywood sellouts, all the people who are working directly with the CCP, supporting the interests of the CCP, or at the very least turning, turning a blind eye to their criminal activities, those are the ones who are basically working as the fertile soil for the CCP to spread its corruption. And I believe that with the balloon and other things we're witnessing right now, the CCP sees that America is in a weakened state. Uh, and it believes it can be much more aggressive and begin fighting the ideological battle, not so much the physical battle, but the ideological battle to begin challenging the United States as the world leader. And I think that's what we're watching. Yes, absolutely. So... Um Instead of blaming all the way the CCP has been uh, infiltrating and influenced the, this country, what is the obligation for America? Because if America don't sell the farmland, CCP would not have bought the farmland. If America is not putting up your Silicon Valley, Wall Street institution, colleges and universities up for sale, the CCP's uh, Confucius Institution would have never made it to the U.S. Ca uh, campuses. So we believe that the battlefield against the CCP, the critical battlefield is not in China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, or the South China Sea. It's right here in the United States of America because CCP got America's technology to build the internet firewall. The CCP got the Wall Street money to build its economical muscle mm -hmm. to dominate the whole world. So what has America, what will America do to stop its own um, irresponsible behavior? The United States needs to understand that we, we are at war with the Chinese Communist Party. It's an undeclared, well, the CCP declared it, but as far as our side, it's an undeclared war. They are waging war against us. And think about it. What is one of the main ideas of communism? Seize the means of production. Who controls the factories? Who controls the supply chains? Who is buying up all the farmland and all the natural resources and all the core industries of the world, all the GDP products? It's the CCP. If we don't do something about this and ban the CCP from doing this, recognize it as warfare, then we're going to wake up one day and realize that they have bought control of the world. They've conquered the world through the markets, and we let them do it. And so, yeah, we need to wake up because uh, the, for, for the CCP, this is what war looks like. Um, it's not a kinetic uh, military conflict, uh, confrontation because CCP has already succeeded in weaponizing the U.S. federal government a uh, agencies. So are you confident that this 118 Congress, when they already started three subcommittee holding the CCP accountable, do you expect some concrete action uh, to take down the CCP in this country? I do. Um, I, do, I do believe there's going to be action taken by the U.S. government against the Chinese Communist Party. It's one of the few issues that Republicans and Democrats actually agree on in the United States. Uh, even Nancy Pelosi has maintained, although she has some ties, maintained a general strong stance, at least calling out the human rights abuses in China. Um, I think they need to realize, though, the nature of the CCP and the nature of Chinese Communist Party warfare. It's not like we think it is. And aside from the unrestricted war doctrine that we, we talk about often, there's also the three warfares concept. Three warfares being psychological warfare, media warfare, and legal warfare. Psychological warfare is not necessarily false information. It's the narrative of how you interpret information. You're altering the way people perceive reality. It's the narrative, right? Uh, the narrative of why China, the CCP, flew a balloon over America. Was it 
that was the story that it was a weather balloon that went off course or is it a military spy balloon? That's the narrative. That's the psychological warfare element of it. The reason things happen. Uh, media warfare is the control of all outlets of information. You can think of TikTok. Even Reddit is partly owned by the CCP, or at least Chinese-owned companies. Uh, and also, we look at, for example, legal warfare, uh, one of the most important but least recognized elements of CCP unrestricted warfare. Again, part of the adopted into military code, three warfare's doctrine. And legal warfare is the, is the manipulation of the international legal systems to silent dissent and to attack its enemies and also defend the interests of the regime. And so this is what war looks like for the CCP. And I hope that the uh, members of our Congress understand this. And aside from that, also the gangster nature, where it is trying to corrupt them. It's trying to give them business deals on the side, uh, use honey traps on the side, do things on the side to compromise them and get them underhandedly serving the interests of the CCP.